Welcome to season two of the Energy Upgrade podcast. I'm your host, Vanessa, master biohacker and successful entrepreneur. In season one of the Energy Upgrade, you got to have a taste for my obsession in all things health, energy, entrepreneurship, spirituality, and biohacking, or how to take radical responsibility in living a life by design. As a certified health coach, integrated health practitioner, kinesiologist, and seasoned entrepreneur who built and sold a seven-figure business, I want to dive deeper in this season too. After healing myself from burnout, from my health falling apart, my hormones leaving my body, I'm here to share everything I wish someone had told me. Every day, I have the incredible opportunity to be mentoring women and supporting them in becoming true magnetic energy bombs. I'm helping them remember who they were all along. It's so powerful that I want to take you in on the journey, almost as if you were a fly on the wall. You'll find that I'm not your typical health coach and I'm not your typical business coach either. I'm somewhere in between with a lot of spirituality sprinkled in there. This podcast is a sacred place where I come and share with you things that will bring you a high return on investment because yes, I'm all about ROI. Life goes fast and if I can show you a shortcut or two, I'll have succeeded at bringing you value. Thank you for being here. Let's go. Your time is now. Your energy is your life force. You want to be able to magnetize your wildest dreams. A liver detox is the fastest way to start healing. You can and you will. Welcome back to the Energy Upgrade. This is Vanessa Gruntman, your host. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, do we have quite the episode for you today. I asked Kristen Stewart, a priestess, a wonderful human being, to come and chat about the divine feminine today. Now, this is not just an ordinary conversation. While you're going to be listening to this, I want you to really pay attention to your body. I want you to pay attention to how you feel because we made sure that this was meant to activate something in you. Now, Kristen and I actually are in a similar coaching container together, and that's how we got to meet. And we were automatically, immediately drawn into each other. It's like there was this deep remembrance. Probably we've been together in a previous life. I don't know, but there is this deep connection. And turns out our stories are actually also similar in so many ways. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about Kristen. She is the CEO of Sacred Fam. She's an activator of divine feminine power, multidimensional mentor, and transformational channel. She was born to elevate the women of this world into their highest potentials, leading women on a journey to experience themselves beyond their current self-perceptions. She integrates Indian shamanism, meditation, coaching, and heart-expanding philosophical teachings. Replacing limiting patterns and beliefs with empowered mindsets, heart activations, and embodied actions. Elevating her clients into their next most expended state of being. Kristen is a mirror for the soul to see itself in all its beauty, power, and sovereignty. Oh, you know, you could kind of see where we're going with this. Power, power, power. It's going like this. These, um you know, 45-ish minutes that you're going to be spending here with us are going to be very important at unlocking deep remembrance and more information about beauty, about your light, about your heart, soul activation, soul remembrance, just just this like overall very, very high-level spiritual conversation And like I said, pay attention to how you feel because it was designed to activate something in you. And hopefully you will feel some shift by the end of just this powerful conversation. Now, let's go. Let's go and dive in with Kristen. Kristen, beautiful soul. Welcome to the Energy Upgrade. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here and for this conversation. And I love the name of that, the energy upgrade, because isn't that what it's ultimately all about? It's all about our energy. And gosh, today, this conversation, we could take it literally in probably 200 directions that we were just brainstorming on before hitting record. But we're going to try to really the intention of today's conversation is to talk about 
this desire that we're noticing women are having towards going back to the feminine, going mm-hmm. back to a deep remembrance of their truth, of their light. Yes. We both have a very similar story. We both both have experienced this awakening, but I would love to, if you could take the listeners through how it happened for you and how the universe kind of was like, eh, now this is not how this is going to (laughs) work. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So for myself, my, you know, my awakening, we could call it the spiritual smackdown (laughs) came in 2012. And so I hadn't, uh, I just returned from a really, life altering journey to the sacred Valley of Peru. And I was opening a yoga studio called sacred roots in my small mountain town, Canmore, Alberta. And within seven months, I was essentially on the floor in, um, extreme burnout, extreme anxiety, uh, and ultimately what landed me in the hospital with a suicidal psychosis. It was the smack. It was time to slow down. Um, clearly my body was telling me for a long time and I was ignoring all the signs that I needed to change the way that I was operating. And so, you know, a little, a little bit of backstory to that is, you know, I, I've always been very active, very physically active and my lifestyle was very mountain oriented. So I was, you know, my partner, his career is as an international mountain guide. And we met in 2002 and married in 04 and, and it was in, into the mountains we go. And so it was a lifestyle of adrenaline, Mm -hmm. a lot of adventure, a lot of adrenaline, And, you know, I've always loved (laughs) to like to, to operate that way. But what I had done was created the, it was like the ultimate cocktail and storm for my nervous system. And so added a new business, which even though it was a yoga studio, um, added a business, added stress. It was ignoring the signs. You know, I was losing my focus easily. I was noticing my, this, this fatigue in my body, but my mode of operation that I had been used to was push through it. You're stronger than this. You can climb, you can go out in the mountains for a 13 hour day. Like what's your problem? That was the voice in my head. Mm-hmm. And then things, you know, rapidly accelerated. It was like the universe said, okay, let's just make this make this really clear. (laughs) Yeah. So seven months opened a business, closed the business. And then it took almost a year to start to heal my body, my nervous system, my endocrine system, and recognize that, yeah, I had, I had to learn a whole new way of being because I was used to hard, fast hustle. Yeah. The masculine way. The masculine way of being and you know it was like doing doing and going and ignoring and mm-hmm. that was the big one mm-hmm. was just ignoring what was coming up and it was like overriding what I was feeling and not actually acknowledging what was going on for me feeling mm-hmm. like I'll just tuck that away and I can do this man up <laughs> man oh. up and get at it And we see so many women in that pattern and not because not by choice, right? It's almost like we fall into this. Yeah. Well, and it's a lot of programming and we've got to recognize that societal programming because what has been celebrated is productivity is strength in that way, right? Mm -hmm. Strength through results and, um, you know, perceived success and whatnot. And so it really requires a, a redefining redefining what is success, redefining what is, what is healthy living. And, you know, what we're here to do is to be as live as alive in presence, in love and joy and peace and harmony as we can. And so we've got a, you know, it was a, it was a wide awake opening to, the feminine basically calling me home. I like to say, you know, at this time, the divine mother was saying, surrender, Mm -hmm. surrender. You've got to 
choose a different way of being soften. Yeah. And, and I had to redefine what soften meant to me too. Mm. I want to talk, I want to hear how you describe it. Cause I always say this soften doesn't mean you have to go weak. Exactly. Right. Exactly. What about you? How do you explain it? Yeah. And, and that was, you know, because that had been my definition of it. It was like soft meant weak yet mm -hmm. soft actually means receive, receive and recognize how supported you know, for myself, it was like, recognize how supported I really was by spirit source. So I, you know, I'd been on the spiritual path for a long time already, but this is when it, it really went next level. And I understood on a deeper level, like the, my connection and that we are here to live in this embodied femininity. Yet I grew up uh, in Northern Alberta, and, you know, as I shared before we started this chat, it was, you know, I grew up in Northern Alberta. It was, I hung out with the boys because it was easier. You know, I had a dirt bike, a snowmobile, um, and was like, that was my, my way of being. And so when I reflect on these, these different times throughout my life, I see clearly where I had, didn't feel safe to be feminine, didn't feel safe with other women, uh, you know, from bullying in school to just dis being so disconnected and muscling and hardening my way through life um, until the universe said no more. Mm -hmm. And it's time to soften, which is to actually surrender into my true essence as a woman. Oh, okay. There's a couple of places I want to take this. I'll, I'll the first thing is I know that some women listening probably right now are like, like, what, what, what are you guys talking about? Like softening, receiving peace, joy, like what the heck, like give me results. Right. Because that's how we've been programmed to just, and, and it's so hard to see a different way. Um, right. cause I remember when I also found myself on the floor from burnout, I just, all these things I was hearing, you know, find joy. You are the light. You are enough. It was actually just like pushing all my buttons. Cause I was like, but how, how do I do this? And I remember being really impatient and anxious. And it, it just, it would have been so much easier to just go back to what I knew, but it was Absolutely. clear I couldn't do that. So how was it for you? Like, how was it from the moment you found yourself actually wanting to end your life, you know, that is kind of the ultimate suffering mm -hmm. to, instead of going back to what you knew, actually deciding to try, like, how did you lean into this? Yeah, it was, you know, it was a journey for sure. And so, you know, what I had first, what I had essentially created was my greatest fear, which was to fail. Mm. So I feel it's important to, to, mm -hmm. to drop that in here. Yeah. So it was like, I cannot fail at this business. Everything's in this business. And that was the, you know, the driver and people saying, well, it's going to take you five years before you see a profit and you're going to be working night and day. And so I was working night and day, not thinking anything was wrong with that because that was what I had heard from other entrepreneurs who were more in that masculine paradigm of operating in business, old paradigm. So there was that piece. And then it was, you know, the, the softening and the coming home, the coming home to the heart. And I recognized that initially it was like, I had never truly embodied self-love. Yeah. I had a hard voice inside that was, that push faster, harder results. And when I, when I thought about, you know, when I basically I couldn't move. So I'd lay on my mat, listening to meditations initially, my yoga mat and just feeling the, the, the medicine of the meditations start to soften into my body. And, you know, it was a lot of grieving and a lot of sadness and a lot of shame that I had to process through too, mm -hmm. because I felt like I was the ultimate fraud as a yoga teacher teaching on joy and light and love. And here I was trying to, to exit, you know, so that was a whole other piece on its own, but it was, 
it was the realization and the deepening into my spiritual path of we are here as light. We are here as light. That's our essence. It's who we are. It's the inner journey of this, you know, where we, we come home to the heart, we come home and we start to dismantle whatever has been overlaying that inner light, that inner radiance in the stories, the experiences. And it was like, I got to start to coax my body into a state of actually starting to understand even what relaxation meant. What if, what a regulated nervous system felt like because I didn't know that all I knew was I thought I didn't realize that I was in such a dysregulated state. I actually confused it a little bit with excitement mm -hmm. because I had created an addiction to the feeling of adrenaline. Oh my gosh. I, and I, like, I keep smiling because I, I, it's like, I'm hearing myself speak. It's weird. Like we've, we've had a very similar story um and when you said oh it just hit me the the failure and the burnout I just got emotional because yeah it's so it's like this dark cloud right that that just comes in and and all these thoughts that we have like you say like no self-love whatsoever it's just hardness and just you know failure like basically being in burnout means we failed yeah and feeling like my body should be stronger than this. That was so interesting to me where it's like, body, why are you failing me? You're stronger than this. Like I have, I was a personal trainer at the time too, you know? And so the whole wellness side and, and it was recognizing the, what I perceived strength to be when the ultimate strength was in my surrender mm -hmm. because it was the vulnerability, which became my superpower. Yeah. Once I saw it that way and that softness and vulnerability was the, uh, it was the ability to, to open the heart and to just allow all the feeling to be felt mm -hmm. because I was very good at not feeling things. Oh yeah. Pros. Yes. We can do this. Buckle up. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. You know, and so you know, it was the greatest gift at the time. It was very traumatic for my, you know, for my entire family. Financially, it was devastating. Um, you know, there was, there were all these pieces to it, of course. Yet I knew that coming out of it, if there was one woman in the world that heard my story by me sharing it, that fell in love with herself and who potentially was on a path of burnout or even to the degree that I went right to the edge, that there was something that I was, I'm able to share that brought her home, started to bring her back to herself, back to her light, to her joy, to the realization she doesn't have to, to live this way any longer. We get to choose differently. We get to find this beautiful embodiment of the feminine and you know, it doesn't mean I don't love running up a mountain still every now and then, you know, it's, it's, but it, it's finding the balance between my very strong fire so that it stays sustainable and it doesn't burn me out. It doesn't burn me. It doesn't burn others and it doesn't get out of control. <laughs> yeah. So I want to go back to the notion of beauty because I don't know, I'm kind of picking up on a pattern and I'd love to hear you on this. And it sounds like all of us who um, have just been, you know, are, are just, let's say, let's call it beautiful. Since childhood, for me anyway, that's always caused trouble. Like it's always caused trouble around my life. Just like you, it was easier. I just decided right away to hang out with boys instead because the, mm. there would there would be no jealousy and I mean to this day it's something that I is triggering for others I get messages all the time and um and so it's almost like I wonder if when you've experienced this and I know you shared that too you became a tomboy and 
it's almost as if we default to this masculine dominant energy because it's just easier. Um, we get to push. We're not as if if we were feminine, we would be even more beautiful, right? We would be in our goddess energy. Right. Like, I don't know. Like, are you noticing that pattern? Because I can definitely reflect back on mine and it's 100% what happened. I was so disconnected to anything that had to do with feeling, receiving, you know, yes. the heart. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, I when I reflect back, I see how one, my intuitive gifts, my my sacred gifts, I call them, were very alive as a child, but we didn't know what was going on. I didn't know how to deal with it. So we just like shut things down, right? Which meant shutting down feeling in many ways because I would feel so much. It was like when I'd be around people, I was feeling all these things. What I now know as feeling their energy, I was feeling what was going on. I was feeling aspects of their their story and whatnot. And so there was the shutting down. There was, it wasn't safe. It didn't feel safe for me to be feminine. I would, I experienced a lot of bullying from the cool girls. I didn't, I never fit in. I always felt on the outskirts of the pretty girls and the cool girls in school too. Um, I experienced a lot of bullying, you know, that got pretty serious. And one particular incident where I was in gray, I would have been 13 and a petition went around my whole school from a certain group of girls, you know, should we all be as perfect as Kristen Shamber, which was my maiden name and just the, the shame I felt and the pain mm. of that. And mm. I like, I feel emotional still talking about it. Cause I was like, all I wanted to do was fit in. Yeah. You were and just what you. I wound up. Yeah. And so at that point, what I started to do was literally dumb down. I started not doing good in school. I started to shrink every aspect of me that, that was too bright, that was bringing the wrong feedback to me. And, you know, and I, this is when I, and at a, you know, interesting time, it's the, t the teenage beginning of the teenage years. And I started to go dark at that time in my life because I didn't, it just didn't feel good. It didn't feel safe to be feminine. Um, I was so disconnected from my heart because it hurt. So it was of like, course. let me put on some armor here and I can be tough. I can handle this. I didn't talk about it. I didn't tell anyone what was going on. Um, I just felt like deal with it on your own. This is what you do, which that pattern has still is still unraveling in my life. But, you know, going back to the feminine and, and what we can call the sisterhood wounds where, you know, the jealousy and comparison and the inability for women to really come shoulder to shoulder and heart to heart and see and celebrate each other for, our, you know, all of who we are and how deeply wound that is in the collective. And, you know, so many of us growing up feeling like, well, I can't, it's not safe to be beautiful. It's not safe to dress well. It's not safe to be who I am authentically expressed. So I'm going to put on a persona. I'm going to harden up because I don't want to feel that pain again. So let me just put another layer of armor over my heart. Mm -hmm. I'll hang out with the boys. <laughs> <laughs> be a little more rough and tumble, which reinforced this programming as well. And it was, you know, it was literally living in this, this way of being of be tough, be hard, because that is strong. Yeah. Yeah, as I'm hearing you speak, I have all these, you know, flashbacks flashing in my head of moments and even through, you know, my first jobs in the corporate world, how I was dimming my light not to, you know, so my boss wouldn't be mad or, you know, just like wild stuff. And I know that people listening, I'm sure there's many women that can relate to this also. Um, and it's interesting how, 
you know, now we have, I don't like, I have a daughter and it's just like, to me, I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I, I want to make sure I don't pass that on. I want to make sure she knows it's safe and it's what she's meant to be, you know, this bright light. Well, my next free event is coming up. It's called High Achiever. Yes, because I'm here to tell you that you can be a high achieving woman. You can rise, you can hack access your highest potential without burning out. Now, I want to tell you about the five pillars that have helped me become a high achiever of the new world, like I call it. A woman with high standards dialed into her heart and soul to reach new levels of success and energy. This opportunity to join me live for this high proximity event is going to be so unique. It'll start on April 29th and we will go for five days. Now, what I'm doing different this time is when you are signing up, you're also going to unlock three bonus days. So really, we're going to have eight days together. And those bonus days are actually going to be really around the womanhood, the woman, the feminine energy, and how we can really become a high achiever, but also become a fully rounded woman, mom, partner, friend, mentor that is grounded in her truth and magic to contribute to the well-being of not only your life, your family, but your entire community. Now this event, I tell you, is going to tell you how to get high on life because to me, being a high achieving woman is all about that. It's going to be fabulous conversations and I tell you, it'll help you redefine what healthy success actually means. I hope you will join me for this event again, April 29th to May 3rd with three bonus days. It's completely free. I'll put the link in the show note. Don't miss this opportunity to spend time with me and the community of women that will show up for themselves. I hope to see you there. Um, I want to hear you talk about this this lineage and this healing, right? The, the seven generations. And because, um, what I notice is often when, when we start talking about these things with women, we can get really activated and shame can come right away to be like, Oh my gosh, did I pass that on to my daughter? Or am, am I modeling this to my daughter or, you know, or being mad at our, our mothers who didn't show us or give, didn't give us the codes to know how to operate. Um, okay. But really just you being you and healing that for yourself is often all we need, right? That's really what it is. You know, the, the healing we do for ourselves is what is rippling through not only our lineage. So I use the, the language of seven generations back and seven generations forward. That's one of the expressions that's taught in shamanism as one of the paths that I have been on has been um, the shamanic path um, and especially Andean shamanism based out of the sacred valley of Peru. And what we know is we're, we're everything is energy. So what, as we heal, we are healing the energetic tethers and cords to those, to that way of being those pro that programming. And it's like our healing liberates our lineage back and forward. And we're clearing and cutting the cords to what wound in through consciousness that was carried forth and what our lineage has experienced. And what is also really important to remember is that, you know, I'm in my, I'll be 49 this year. And when I think about my mother, I was born, so I was born in 75. My mother was right in the, you know, as the feminist yeah. movement was rocking. And I say, I often say, though it brought certain progress, it really messed us up. Oh my gosh, it so, put us back. <laughs> It put us back in some ways. Now, you know, I have a beautiful relationship with my mother. She decided to not work really and to, you know, be devoted to myself and my brother and to like, that was what she chose. She faced a lot of criticism for that choice because of that time as well. Mm. But I also, you know, so there's that aspect of it. And then we think back and it's like, well, our grandparents and great grandparents lived through world wars. They lived through the Great Depression where 
it was simply try to survive. Yeah. So it's scarcity consciousness, it's war consciousness. It was a very hard way of living. My origins are German, so a very stoic culture as well. So having stoic, like a stoic grandmother, you know, and and who was basically, you know, she, her mother died when she was nine years old. She raised her eight younger siblings as a nine-year-old girl. And it was, it was just hard living. And so when we think about consciousness, it's, this is what has been passed down. And so, you know, my father's, I'm noticing I'm even using my grandmother's little filler word. She always used. she's both my grandmothers have passed away. You know, she would always say, and I've said that a few times, which is so funny. So I'm calling myself out on it. <laughs> she's clearly it. here in this conversation with us. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> welcome grandmother, Amelia Pearl. And it's when we look at, she was a bit of a, a tougher a tougher mother yet it was because of how she lived and was trying to survive and put food on the table mm. or she's it was my father's mother I'm referring to right now put food on the table for her seven children they were farmers it was very sparse I remember my my father saying if you didn't grab food right away you might not get anything yeah yeah and so pure survival yeah right so we think about all of that wound in and it, it's these this consciousness is what we are here to also unwind and recognize our parents and our grandparents did the best they could with what they knew at the time you know we have access to an incredible information and resources and a whole other way of living and being that has us opening into an abundance that they didn't even know was possible Mm -hmm. it, but it was it didn't exist yeah exactly but it's interesting because despite that a lot of us are still focusing only on that scarcity mindset right. but it's in your dna yes like right just from what you just shared it's it's in us it's so you know really noticing that um and healing that is so liberating to just be able to embrace, you know, everything we have access to. Absolutely. Because I mean, we existed while our grandmother was pregnant with our mother. Yes. I love that. It's so cool. So when you think about that, it's, we're, we're doing big work on the planet right now for, for the collective. And then there's the collective feminine consciousness. Yeah. Let's talk about that. And so the and this piece ties into women not feeling safe to be beautiful mm -hmm. because unfortunately there are many women and myself included who have had traumatic experiences mm -hmm. that shut us down and really i learned it wasn't safe mm -hmm. it wasn't safe to be beautiful it wasn't safe to to express to be dressed in what i would consider you know more feminine highlighting beauty or any of that because it brought the wrong attention from the masculine and there were uh, traumatic experiences for me that reinforced that mm -hmm. and so as we heal ourselves again we're healing this in the collective because we're removing the energy of our own story the trauma of our own story from the collective consciousness as we heal and so it's like it, it removes some of the shadow that we've had to experience to allow more light in, allow more light into us, allow us to light up more, to have these types of conversations, to bring out what bring, you know, to move through this shadow, to bring forth more of our light. Because the way I see it, it it's like experiences like this and what the collective consciousness the feminine has known over the course of history suppression persecution like all of this is what we're unwinding right now and so we carry forth these aspects of of the darkness of the shadow and i see it it's like imagine you're the light and i use this reference the light of ten thousand suns because you are we are as a soul 
through the spiritual lens. This is, this is our truth. And these 10,000 suns, it's like there's a little cap over that portal of light. So there's 10,000 portals of light that want to blast. And we've got half or three quarters of them capped, blocking that fullness, that richness, that radiance, that vitality from coming fully alive within us, which is what we're, how we're here to live and how we're here to be expressed as. But we've got to go in and we've got to remove the caps, go in and, and do that inner work so the light can shine and we get to dismantle this old paradigm way of operating. We get to heal those aspects of ourself that have known trauma, have known a lack of safety yeah. to be who we are, to let our light come out more, to step into spaces and conversations and circles of women where it's safe to be seen it's safe to be celebrated it's safe to be beautiful it's safe to be who we are and this is what is really shifting things and creating a whole new way of well it's creating a whole new wave of healing that is rippling through the collective where women are feeling safe to come out as spiritual feeling safe to come out and have these types of conversations and this is what is lighting up more on the planet, more upon more of this as we light up ourselves. Mm -hmm. And this is the work. And it would be yes. so easy to focus on all the chaos in the world right now, but it's, it, we got to go back to the light, always back yeah. to the light. Yeah. I, it, I call it a remembering. We're remembering who we truly are. Totally. We, we go back to the beginning, even before we, you know, we came in as light <laughs> will leave as light. And during the time we're here in this temporary temple, I call it this body that houses mm -hmm. our light. We, we take exquisite care of it because we honor it. We love it. And that's, you know, that's another source of disconnect for many women, like coming home to body love for what this body is and what it can do and lighting it up from the inside, because that's really what the journey is. I feel this human journey is a journey home to love, to remember love, to know love, to be it for one another. It's the greatest gift we've got. And it, it's, it's right here. It's all in our heart, but we've got to remove perhaps the, the arrows that have pierced the light and created those little wounds that lock in. And when they get locked in over time, it feels heavy and it can feel dark and, we can start to lose our sense of equilibrium and our sense of who we are. Yet the awakening is actually a in progress. Coming. Yeah. And it's, it's in progress. It's coming home to the truth of who we are okay. before we forgot. And before we learned through the programming that we thought we were supposed to be someone else, something different. Exactly. And I just love your visual of those caps. Um, on on the 10,000 suns because you know that's exactly how I always describe healing it doesn't have to be this it's not actually about this being this like sad and torturous thing it's actually just shedding those layers shedding those caps removing those caps so that the light can shine again because the more every time you remove just a little bit you know, there's more light that comes and then you notice it reflecting back from also others. And, Absolutely. and um, you know, for mothers listening, this is the greatest gift we can give our children also to just allow ourselves to be that light. And that is enough. And that's yeah. all they need from us is to witness that and see that it's, wow, okay, it's okay. Yeah. And to feel, and we feel it and it, it and it comes from the heart. And one of the first things a shaman would traditionally ask when you'd go see a shaman for healing is when did you stop singing and dancing? Huh. Oh, yes. It's so powerful. Right. That's when the disconnection was the ego took over the survival yeah. took over survival. And we're here to have such a good time. <laughs> like we are here to create the heaven on earth through us. That's the heaven. It's we're here to live so lit and ignited and alive and joyful and playful 
and abundant because the abundance pours in when we're living through the lens of seeing the beauty all around us, the beauty we are, the beauty all around us. And we get to add more light to the planet. Isn't that an epic mission? I know. And, and I know that. It, so if you're listening right now and you're like, okay, yeah, that's all great, but how do I pay my bills? Right. Cause that's how I used to think I, my sure. mind would go there right away. And, and the truth is actually you pay your bills with your light. <laughs> We have it all wrong. Like that's all you just, just by honoring your gifts, your power, your light, your story by owning that, that's how you pay your bills in folds. Because think about, we think about, you know, there's those people that you just want to be in their energy field. Exactly. They're so bright. They're so light. They're so radiant. It's like more, please. Yeah. The magnetism, the aura is shining so bright and it's so magnetic that's how you pay your bills <laughs> because people, people just want to be with you and be around you. And it's, and as you allow this, it's more creativity flows and higher consciousness streams. And now we're tapping into the magic that we truly are. Exactly. And, you know, I, I went to this like really deep spiritual retreat recently and I didn't really talk much about it but if there's one thing I came out of it with is gosh we make it hard on ourselves seriously like it doesn't have to be hard it can yeah. actually be the most beautiful effortless journey if we just allow ourselves to actually be that be yeah. that light and I love what you said about it doesn't have to be this heavy dark dense journey and I think some people, you know, I used to think that that's the healing journey when actually it could be so much lighter. So I had shared a post recently, let's dance our way through this. And we're here to be supported. We're never meant to do this alone. No. And, you know, sharing these sorts of conversations really opens up because it can feel really lonely when it's happening. And mm -hmm. the first thing I know I wanted to do and what I did do was go hide because I didn't want anyone to see me in this state of being and when there was this whole what happened for me which was so beautiful was there is this underground sisterhood I called them all of these magical healers in my community who reached out quietly and said hey I heard you're going through a hard time come see me <gasps> and I went through like thousands of dollars worth of free treatments from all of these women who all said, we just want to see you back in your light, doing what you do for the world. And, and I knew what they did. Wow. <laughs> that's the power of vulnerability, the sisterhood and what we get to do for each other. We were designed like at a cellular level to heal um, in sisterhoods. Like that's just how it's always been right? The women would kind of like, let's, let's do this. Let's like huddle. Let's, let's heal. That's just how it's, how it is. Why are we not doing that anymore? Is like, it just blows my mind. But I think that's what both you and I are trying to recreate in our own world is create these beautiful communities where people can finally feel safe to be themselves, to be seen, to be held. Um, and hopefully there's just going to be more and more and yeah. that's how we're going to create the change we want to see in the world, right? Absolutely. Because when we feel the heart of another person, that's, it's so beautiful. The connection, we're wired for connectivity. We're wired to love. Yeah. And so when we can open to this and, and the safety, when we feel safe to be vulnerable, when we feel safe to open, the heart is is what governs the the stronger neural tissue is in the heart actually and this is what comes alive and then the electromagnetic field of the heart is alive and this ripples into the field into the quantum mm -hmm. and you, you feel that and this is what is bringing the healing i mean as women for thousands of years we gathered in sacred circle around the fires singing and dancing and drumming we gathered in high council and would as healers as medicine women 
I bring in the language of as the, you know, the, the high priestesses and the queens, right? All these codes of remembrance of this is what we used to do. And whether it was in temples or white tents around the fire, and now we get to do this by creating communities to come together where we get to be seen, we get to be supported, we get to be celebrated. And it's the greatest feeling. Mm, I love this. Oh, gosh. This conversation could literally um, be half a day and I and I hope it will be one day. <laughs> I just love being in your presence. Definitely. Mm -hmm. You have this beautiful light. Um, and I'm so grateful to know you, um, Kristen. Thank you so much for sharing all your gifts with us today. Where can people find you? Because everybody is going to need an extra <laughs> those of you for sure. Oh my gosh. So you can find me on Instagram uh, at underscore Kristen Stewart. And I'm, I'm in some website transition right now. So that is coming, but uh, you can also find me on Facebook at Kristen Stewart. And uh, I'd like to an ex extend an invitation to any of your listeners who might be interested in tapping into a little more of the frequency of transmission of love of the divine mother, uh, you know, if there's anyone that resonates with this divine feminine conversation, where I have something called a channel membership. And it's where I go in and I do some audio riffs, and I'll drop some transmissions two or three times a week. And I'm happy to extend an invitation to your listeners to come into the channel for a month if they'd like. And it's, mm. uh, it's somewhere that they can pop in and receive some of these codes frequencies and uh start to to deepen into this mm, great well we'll put the information of that in the show notes that's so generous of you i will be in that for sure <laughs> i want to hear all these beautiful transmissions of yours um thank you again from my heart to yours i appreciate you i see you i honor you um and please go and follow Kristen for more of this beautiful, beautiful work. Thank you again so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. And what you have created with this platform is incredible. And I'm so celebrating what is being created here and what is rippling from the conversations and the, the commitment that you have to this work. It is an honor to be a part of it with you. And I'm so excited what's coming into the world through it all. Yeah. Thank you. The information shared on this podcast is for information purposes only and doesn't provide any medical advice. Vanessa Grutman does not cure, diagnose, or treat disease. Please consult your physician before trying any new protocol or product. 